Maybe we could show uh, some of Matt's experiments next because um, they're just really amazing. I right, mean, so, we're, yeah, so we'll jump into it yeah. and just as a little prelude here. So the Before idea is... Before we started, why don't you set it up for us? Right. So, right, so here we are. So you can imagine you're sitting right now in the lab because this is exactly what we would see if we were sitting in the lab. And on the right-hand side, uh, you see a top-down. It's a video of what we call a maze. It's a long track. It's like a long hallway. It's about 10 meters long, actually. Pretty long for this rat. It would take this rat maybe, you know, maybe a minute or two, actually, to, you know, to fully go back and forth along this. On the left, what you're seeing is brain activity. Those little flashing lights, each time you see a little flash, that is the discharge of a single brain cell and the little colored regions indicate different brain cells. So you're, what you're seeing is in real time what in this case two, four, six, eight, nine, eight or nine individual brain cells are doing, and we'll loop through this again. Could you loop through that one again right. for us, the same one? What these brain cells are doing when an animal's running on this little track. Now in this part of the brain, this memory part of the brain called the hippocampus, one striking thing that we see is that the pattern that you see on the left is going to depend upon exactly where the animal is on the right. In other words, there's a correspondence between what the brain is doing and where the animal is when the animal is moving. So you can see that on the right, the little, the, the little dots or the, uh, you know, the brain activity, the single discharge of single cells is mapped onto the maze. So for instance, you see in the lower left, there are lots of blue points. That's because the blue cell, it's not really blue, it's just color-coded that way. <laughs> the blue cell tends to fire whenever the animal's in that part of the maze. On the other hand, you see the little cyan cell down in the lower right. And, and we have place, I should say, we have place cells too. So if, like, I was walking through my house, you know, exactly. a place cell would fire as I went past the counter in my kitchen. So you could, so you could say, well, you know, if I'm in there, if I could record the activity of these cells, memory cells are cells that fire in certain places, if I could record them, I might be able to tell just by reading your mind, in a sense, where you, where you are. <laughs> well, so if we go to the next video. Let's go to the next video. So let's just try that. Or you read the mind of a rat. <laughs> so now it's going to be the same experiment, the same data. You can see on the left, that's the, it's the same brain cells firing away. But on the right now, instead of showing you where the brain cells fire when the animal's on the maze, instead, we're decoding the activity. We're guessing where the animal is just by looking at what's going on in the brain. Now, uh, if you watch, when the animal starts walking along the track, see the little triangles there? That's our best guess as to where the animal is. And it does pretty well. The green circle is just there to kind of show you uh, where the rat is. So our guess, the triangles, fall right on top of the circle, where the animal is. But notice when the animal stops, and maybe we can just rewind. Well, you can actually see here, animal stop, and we'll rewind it. Animal moving, brain tells, the brain tells you where the animal is. Animal stops, notice where the triangles go. They stop firing, they, or they stop reflecting where the animal is. You, right. see them, you see that little flash? The triangles jumped across the track, it was just a fraction of a second, very brief. But the brain activity during those brief moments instead reflects not where the animal is, but where it has been or where it could be. The animal is thinking about, in a sense, things that are remote from its immediate experience. Now time you can, travel. Yeah, time travel. The animal just, it, you know, it's sitting briefly, and what happens in this part of the brain, it's an older part of the brain, the paleocortex, which includes these, uh, these uh, brain areas that are critical for memory, for emotion, for driving uh, uh, what you might think of as uh, uh, more primitive behavior. Well, this part of the brain can shut off on a dime. In just a fraction of a second, it can go from being actively engaged, taking information in from the outside world, to going into what looks remarkably like sleep. So these memory and emotional areas can go to sleep while the newer parts of the brain, the neocortex, the part of the brain that's important for keeping track of you know, threats, of monitoring the external world, of making sure you get to where you're going, the part of the brain that has to deal with the outside world, that can be awake, and this other part of the brain can be asleep. So we can think of, this state of just thinking, of 
would being you call inattentive. It, would, you call being, it, would you call it daydreaming almost? Now, daydreaming might be if I, you know, if you're sitting there and you say, ah, you know, Wilson is not really <laughs> interesting anymore. I'm going to, you know, I wonder what, you know, where, where did I park my car? Now mm -hmm. you start, your mind starts to wander. You start thinking about this, your, the memory parts of the brain that can now go back and retrieve past experience. They've got more interesting You've things. You've got that parking lot place cell right. firing. It's there. But now, the longer you remain in that state, the further out, the more you can actually think about remote from where you are right now. And if you stay in that state long, you say daydreaming, at some point you may actually start to drift off into sleep. You may make a transition from this quiet wakefulness into early non-REM sleep. So you can think of non-REM sleep as emerging, in a sense, from what the brain naturally does when it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to attend to the outside world. That might only last a fraction of a second. It might last 20 minutes. It might last 20 hours.